I think one of the biggest questions I get from clients and, and friends is how do we get our beautiful finish on wood countertops, whether it's butcher block or, or like this live edge piece here. So I've tried to explain it to people and walk them through it, but how do you briefly put 20 years plus of experience staining and, and finishing in, in, in this short conversation? So I thought I'd go ahead and make a video. And uh, this, this video is gonna show you how we prep and gel coat a stain and then do a polyurethane finish. So a critical step that's often overlooked because people assume that these slabs are sanded properly from the manufacturer is sanding. And we wanna sand everything to a consistent 120 grit uh, sandpaper. So what you're gonna see here is, is I've put a light pencil mark everywhere just to make sure that I that I hit every piece of this of this exposed butcher block. A uh, little bit time consuming, but incredibly necessary to get the consistency that we're always looking for. So the first thing you're gonna see me do is wipe down the slabs with some mineral spirits. And what that does is the, the mineral spirits open up the pores and then dry quickly. And so as they dry, it pulls the gel stain deeper into the wood, giving you a penetration, a consistency in finish that you're not going to get unless you uh, use this critical step. Now, we don't stain the bottom of the slabs. That would be a waste of energy, but we do stain about two inches around the whole thing, and then we seal the bottom of the slabs with a polyurethane because you want the entire slab to be sealed. So what you're gonna see me do here is lay out for the cutout that we need for the undermounted sink. Now, if you want an undermounted sink on a butcher block slab, the level of detail and perfection that you have to have with your cutout is, is pretty high. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this uh, as a DIY type of thing. And, and as you can see, I'm using a really specialized machine here. This is a handheld CNC router. And so I can program exactly the dimensions of what the sink is and what I want the cutout to be, exactly the round over of each of the corners and uh, lay this thing out. And then whenever I go to cut, I can set it to cut any, you know, very shallow or, uh, or very deep. And so I just make about nine or 10 passes, roughly an eighth to a quarter per pass. And that allows me to cut this out in, in just a really high level of perfection. So it's a neat tool. Uh, as you can see from the screen here, all I've got to do is keep my big circle on the path that I programmed and it micro adjusts so that I can get such a consistent cut, very little sanding at the end, very little burn marks, and it's just a professional quality look that, that I never was able to get with a circular saw and a jigsaw. So next here, I'll lay out and, and drill out from my faucet. Uh, I like to use four snip bits, it gives me a really clean cut. And then next, I'll get my router out with a quarter inch round over bit and clean up those edges. Then we want to sand the inside and just, uh, again, that, that CNC router that I use makes the sanding so much easier and it's a lot less. I'm just, I'm just making it a more consistent cut, getting rid of any burn marks so that I can go ahead and stain it. And when we stain, we're following the same process. Mineral spirits, gel stain, wipe off the gel stain and rub it in for consistency, okay? And so then the next step is we're going to start the polyurethane. And I like to use a fast drying wipe on polyurethane. Now here's the key with polyurethane. We want six or seven really thin coats rather than one or two really thick coats. Very thin coats. Between each coat, I'm just sort of wiping it down with a cardboard, piece of cardboard paper. That scuffs it up just enough for the next coat to bond, but I'm not scratching it or, or taking the sheen off at all. This is a satin finish, so as you can see, it's, it's not a high gloss, it's what they wanted. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and set the undermounted sink. I set it in, in a heavy duty silicone, and so I'm just protecting the wood from that silicone, and I'm also gonna protect the actual inside of the tub uh, of, from the silicone because uh, it just is a huge hassle to get that silicone off once it gets on that tub. It's pretty sticky stuff.
So these slabs went into a basement remodel that we just completed. Uh, they did a dry fall ceiling, which kind of gives it a dark look. Love the design that our customer came up with. She a, has a background in interior design and those hexagon tiles and everything just looks so good. We all couldn't be more proud and happy with how this turned out. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And if I missed something or you have some questions, then put them in the comments and I'll do my best to respond accordingly.